Welcome to SpecTrack. We'll be looking at Blackboard NMR Problem 2 and the molecular formula for this compound is C4HAO. Now the first thing we're going to do is find the degree of unsaturation and here's the formula for that. The degree of unsaturation tells you the number of pi bonds plus rings in a compound. The C stands for the number of carbons. The H stands for the number of hydrogens plus halogens. And the N stands for the number of nitrogens. And when you do the calculation, Working. you get a degree of unsaturation of 1. Now the degree of unsaturation tells us the number of pi bonds plus rings in a compound. So if we have one degree of unsaturation, we have either a ring or a pi bond. Now since this compound contains oxygen, we should consider either an aldehyde or a ketone as a possibility. Those are not the only possibilities, but they are the most likely possibilities. And what we can do is we can take a look at the IR. So here's the IR and what we see is we see at 1700 a strong absorption. This type of absorption indicates a carbonyl group and a carbonyl group has one pi bond and that accounts for our one degree of unsaturation. So therefore if we have one degree of unsaturation in the carbonyl, the rest of the molecule is saturated. So when we see an absorption to the right of 3000 over here, this indicates saturated carbon-hydrogen bond stretch. And that's perfectly consistent with the fact that we have just one degree of unsaturation accounted for by a carbonyl. If we had seen an absorption to the left of 3000, this would indicate an sp2 carbon-hydrogen bond stretch. Okay, well that's about all the information that we can get out of the IR. So we'll pull the IR out and take a look at the NMR now. And bringing in the NMR, here's what we see. We see that in the region between 9 and 10, there is no absorption on the NMR. Now, between 9 and 10, this is where the signal would come in for an aldehyde. So, the absence of this signal tells us for sure we don't have an aldehyde, we know we have a carbonyl, so we must have a ketone. Now, at this point, the identity of the molecule should be fairly clear because there's only one possible ketone that we can have with four carbons. Now these are the signals that all occurred upfield. And what we see here is we see a classic example of an ethyl group. A two hydrogen quartet and a three hydrogen triplet. Now how do we know this is two hydrogen, this is three hydrogens? Well, you can kind of eyeball it. If you look at it, there's only eight hydrogens in the compound. And these two signals here are of equal areas. You can just see that. Or you can measure it. And this is going to be somewhat less, about two-thirds less than these. So what we have here is a clear signature in the green and purple area of an ethyl group. And an ethyl group would look like that. Now, an isolated methyl group, one which does not have any neighboring hydrogens that can cause splitting, would be indicative of a three-hydrogen singlet that we see here in orange. And so, let's go ahead and bring that in. Okay. And then, the only thing we haven't brought in is the fact that we are aware that there is a carbonyl in this molecule, and at this point, uh, all the data is consistent with the molecule which would be called 2-butanone or ethyl methyl ketone. 
So let's take a look at the carbon-13 NMR and see if that doesn't help things out in clarifying whether we got it right or whether we didn't. Um, bringing in the carbon-13 NMR, what we get is we get a structure here which shows us that just around 200 parts per million we see uh, a signal and that indicates a carbonyl when you see a signal on the carbon-13 right around 200. That's about the only thing that comes in there. And we also see besides that that there are three signals over here that are going to be upfield. That's consistent with what we see here with the purple, the green, and the uh, orange. Now the most upfield signal over here, the purple, has three hydrogens. And if we look at the splitting up over here, that's three plus one. That's a quartet. And if we go ahead and we look at these two signals over here, uh, what we see is we see the most upfield here as a triplet. That's consistent with the green environment here. That's the green carbon environment. And the two green hydrogens, those are what causes this signal to be a triplet. And then the orange environment here, the carbon environment, that has three hydrogens and that would be a quartet. Uh, this information here is the solvent and we don't worry about that. And so pretty much uh, everything works out pretty good here. Looks like, well, we got what we got. And as the Klingons say, <coughs> that means success. Uh, thank you for being part of the experience.